Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends this is Gunjan here welcome to the 40th episode of dirty chess tricks anybody who wants to learn the sicilian the first thing he needs to know what he is going to do against mora gambit due to its aggressive piece layout fixed structure and less theory at club level this opening is one of the most popular choice against sicilian especially below 2000 Now the setup which I am going to advocate here not only contains lot of tricks, but as we will see that if White routinely churn out normal Mora Gambit moves, then Black can literally win the games very quickly. In this line, there are very few games available in database, and that's why it's a great surprise weapon for you in tournament practice. The opening arises after the following order. E4, C5, D4, C captures D4, and now White offers the second pawn with the move C3. Here, my recommendation is you should certainly capture this pawn, and after Knight captures C3, you can already see in return White get two open files for his pieces and a great attack. But no matter, we are going to continue with one of the main line of Mora Gambit, starting with Knight to C6. Knight to f3, d6, bishop to c4, and now a very important move, a6. a6 is controlling the vital square b5, and we are all set to play now knight to f6. It is very important to understand that without a6, if you play the move knight to f6, then straight away you enter into one of the Mora Gambit trap, and here after the move e5. just within the seven move of the game black position is completely busted if you want to know more about this line then i have covered in detail in my dirty chess tricks against sicilian episode number 9 so kindly check it out okay so a6 white will castle on the king side we are going to play knight to f6 and now the normal move of the mora gambit is to play queen to e2 rook to d1 and start utilizing this open c and d file and i think this is one of the most popular choice by white as below 2000 not many players think about the opening in very depth as a mora gambit player if you are white in this position then my recommendation is you should certainly play the move h3 and avoid the move bishop to g4 which we are about to see Before we look at queen to e2 the important point i like to mention here that e5 at this position doesn't work because we have the control on the b5 square and here the simple line can goes like this d captures e5 queen captures d8 knight captures d8 knight captures e5 attacking on f7 but after the star move bishop to e6 not only black has consolidate his extra pawn but white has hardly any more threats in this position so let's see most popular choice by white queen to e2 well after that my recommendation is you play the move bishop to g4 pinning down the knight and as you have seen i have highlighted by the arrows the simple but very effective plan of the campaign by black that is he wants to play e6 bishop to e7 castle on the king side remain a solid pawn up and asking white where is your compensation lies the main line continues with rook to d1 so pinning down the d6 pawn and thus threatening the move e5 which right now not possible because our c6 knight is covering the vital e5 square so black should continue with his routine plan e6 and we reach to the most critical position of this line when i check this position in online database i found out that here there are two popular choice by the white and those are bishop to f4 and the move h3 and myself as a sicilian player i have seen this moves in my games 90% of the time well amazingly enough let me tell you this both the moves leads to the great disaster in the white camp and that we are about to see the first move i want to consider is h3 
which is more natural in this position. But here after a few captures, let's say bishop captures f3, queen captures f3, knight to e5, attacking two spots, queen to e2, and after knight captures c4, queen captures c4, and the move bishop to e7. Not only black has exchanged two minor pieces which reduce the attacking potential of white, but on the next turn black is going to castle and it is very unclear where white is going to attack. Probably the most critical response in this position is e5, taking the benefit of pinned d6 pawn, but still after the forcing line that is d5 counterattacking the queen queen to b3 and now the simple move knight to d7 and no matter however white respond he got miserable position so as the knight is attacking on e5 white can support it with either of the two move but none of them gives any satisfaction result to the white camp the first obvious move f4 is a very bad one the simple reason is after queen to b6 the queens are going to be exchanged and black will be a clear pawn up and instead of that if your opponent continues with bishop to f4 then black should castle first so if white wants his pawn back this is the right time he can go for it but still after the following sequence that is knight to c5 attacking the queen queen to b4 knight to d3 double discover attack so white response is force so white has to keep guard the bishop and the only good move is queen to d4 but after knight captures b2 rook to b1 and knight to c4 there is no change in the position as black is still a healthy pawn up so h3 is a completely harmless move in this position and that is why bishop to f4 is one of the most popular choice by white as it pressurized the d6 square and white pieces are actively placed well yes indeed that's true but there's one problem that after this move black instantly get winning position and you will be fascinated once i'll show you my tricky pet line how often white completely demolish within few moves after this situation here we are going to continue with knight to h5 attacking the bishop and bishop has the only good move bishop to e3 if your opponent continues with bishop to g3 then after the simple continuation that is knight captures g3 h captures g3 knight to e5 is not a good move in this position so my recommendation is you continue with h5 taking good advantage of that pain and after the move queen to e3 and the move h4 you can already see the h file is going to open up black major pieces will flood on the h file and even after a pawn up it is only black who is the in charge of the attack i have attached a model game in the pgn which will give you a very good idea how to generate attack from this position okay bishop to e3 what else and before i move on i like to mention that even title players has fallen into this tricks and in many of my games i simply crushed my opponent after the following model that is knight to e5 attacking two times bishop to b3 now the simple move bishop captures f3 pawn captures f3 and now queen to h4 <laughs> and white position is completely collapsing so the simplest plan I want to follow is queen to h3 and knight captures f3 and nabbing the white queen. That means white has to act very, very fast, which in fact not there in this position. There are two moves tried in this position and let's see each by turn. The first move I want to consider is king to g2 which has been played by a 2000 rated opponent against an international master. So idea is very simple, white is stopping the move queen to h3. And here if you are feeling very aggressive, then you can go ahead and play the move g5. However, 
I personally like the line which black players choose in this game that is bishop to e7. A simple developing move which gives black a great deal of flexibility. White continues with rook to g1. Black plays the obvious move bishop to g5. So once the dark square bishop will be exchanged then black attack will become more potent and in the game white continues with bishop captures g5 queen captures g5 if king to f1 then queen to h4 is a very strong reply so in the game white continues with king to h1 black plays the forcing move queen to f6 attacking on f3 and the only way to defend this pawn is to play bishop to d1 what an ugly move white has to play after that black simply continue with rook to c8 so planning is knight to c4 if it's required and white continues with rook to b1 which i think is a great mistake because now black instantly get a winning position after knight to f4 attacking the queen queen to e1 and black player continue with g5 which is perfectly fine in this position but instead of that black get the instant win if he had played this move knight to d3 queen to d2 and now the star move in this position rook to c5 and this rook lift is a very deadly and a very cunning reply for example the normal looking move in this position is bishop to c2 attacking on the knight but here comes the cute point behind this rook lift black will continue with rook to h5 anyways if white plays rook to g2 then knight captures g2 and apart from it any other moves let's say bishop captures d3 then there comes boom <laughs> Yes, indeed, it's a checkmate scenario for the white camp. The second move I want to consider is bishop to a4 check, which has a very nice idea that if black foolishly play the move b5, then white can sacrifice a piece there and get some attack on the black king. Well, here the simplest move in the world is you continue with king to e7, even though it looks ugly. Your king is quite safe on e7, and if it's required, then can transfer to the f6 square. This position has been reached one time between a 2300 plus rated opponent against a GM, where I think white become desperate and continue with rook captures d6. Well, the GM replied very calmly. He simply collect this free rook, and after the obvious reply, queen d2 check. Of course, you cannot go to the e7 because of the simple move knight to d5 check. And the point is, if you take this free knight, then there comes bishop to g5 and your queen is a corner. But of course, black is not that much fool and here he continue with the accurate response, king to c7. And the game finished very quickly after the following continuation that is knight to d5 check, king to b8 queen to e5 which create the checkmate thread but black defends elegantly with e captures d5 and i think this is a winning move because after the sequence that is queen captures d5 knight to f3 check king to f1 and the move knight to f4 black has a multiple thread and if white give up the dark square bishop then there is no attack in this position as black is a clear two piece up. Instead of rook captures d6, the more solid reply is king to g2, which in fact happened in one of my game against a fide master, where I continue with g5. And I think this game is a moral demonstration how good black chances are in this position. Okay, my opponent continues with queen to d2 so he's attacking two spots and in fact i have the only reply king to f6 which save both the spot my opponent continues his aggression with rook to g1 i played knight to f4 check and now by force white has to take it 
otherwise knight to f3 will happen so he took i took back and after knight to e2 it looks like white is generating some attack but after black's next reply game is completely lost for the white before i show it to you i like you to pause this video and find out what is the winning move here for the black Well, I hope you find this wonderful blow. Bam! <laughs> A wonderful queen sacrifice. If white take, then after knight captures f3, not only black will regain the queen, but at this position, he is clearly 3 pawn up. So that's why in this game, my opponent continue with king to f1. But this doesn't help as after the move, queen check. The only reply is rook to g2. After that, I simply consolidated my f-pawn with bishop to h6. So open h and g-file pressure is too much for the white. In the game, my opponent continues with knight to g1 attacking the queen. I played queen to h1. And here he played queen captures d6, which I think is a decisive mistake of the game. As after the move, rook to g8, my opponent simply resigned. As one can clearly see that after rook takes, rook takes, king to e2, rook captures g1, rook captures g1, and queen captures g1. Not only black emerge with an extra piece, but black has an extra pawn on h file, which is going to be queen very fast. That's it guys, I hope you enjoy and learn this wonderful tricky line against Mora Gambit. Remember that after the move bishop to e3, we have the forcing sequence start with knight to e5, bishop to b3, bishop captures, queen captures and the star move, queen to h4. And after this, however white plays, he get completely lost position. Well, thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment on this. And I'll meet you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care.